Welcome my family community. We have a very interesting topic to do. It is also coming with a warning and a little bit of help for another fellow YouTuber. So let's get started y'all. It's coffee time. Good morning my family community. It has been a really long time and we are actually going to have coffee time this morning. I have a very important message and um, one that I'm going to ask you if you would help with. Now it's not going to require anything hard. Um, I have ran across something that just hit me like a ton of bricks. Um, as you all know, I have shared some of the things that came to me, like the raised beds and all, and this could be fine. However, <clears throat> there comes a point where we're going to have to put on the brakes, and today I'm putting on the brakes, and I guess this is God's way of showing me something. That's what I took this as. It was somebody else's God help them. Their heartbreaking moment was my reality. Their heartbreaking moment was my way of, I assumed that God was telling me to be careful. The, sometimes we will get those warnings. And I will just say this. The channel, The Rose Homestead, um, God bless that woman. I am bringing her channel up today for a reason. She has been on YouTube way more than I have. Much longer than I have. I think several years at least. Um, I have been almost two years. Now I do know this. It does take an awful lot to be able to create a channel in some form or way she was absolutely correct this is a job for us because believe it or not we do pay our taxes as well though somebody may be monetized y'all we do pay our taxes so this is a job but it's the hardest job because you got to come up with something every day to interest everybody in the lifestyle that you live every single day because you choose to share it so I get that she had come across a I guess collaboration a sponsorship and so she decided to do the sponsorship it's she's done them before and everything was going great and then she got the contract and when she opened up the contract y'all this is when the devastation happened and this is when my reality went oh my goodness so um, when she opened up that contract she instantly lost her whole entire channel it got hijacked every video everything about her channel was taking away from her she literally she went to YouTube she went to Google she went everywhere she possibly can go to get help to get her channel back and unfortunately she cannot she started over now the help would come from I'm mentioning her she doesn't know anything about me I'm just a subscriber to her, but my heart reached out to her because, look, I'm a homesteader, I'm a fresh miller, I understand what it takes, and we share our life with you. And as far as the devastation, I totally get that because I'm, I'm losing subscribers, and that 
can be important. So I get what she's going through. I literally cried for her. So I'm going to reach out to try to help. And all it takes is watch some videos from her from front to finish. It helps her be able to build back up to where she can be monetized again. And even if you don't watch her channel, she does a lot of bread making of sorts, whether it's store-bought bread or milling. She does a lot of sourdough. She has an amazing voice when it comes to Christian music. So I will say that she has so much content on her homestead. And if you're not interested in that one, just silence your phone and let it run. Um, I'm just looking to help her because I know what it feels like. I'm having to rebuild back up myself. So, and I am going to be very, very picky from now on, if any more. Honestly, I may decide not to do any more collaborations or any more sharing because, honestly, it is not worth losing your entire workload and I mean entire work that is like somebody who turned around and has worked at a job for five years and a boss just comes up to you basically for no reason and says hey you're fired that's devastating and it takes away from your income it takes away from everything so I am reaching out to help her like I said, she has no idea who I am, y'all. It's just what I am. When God lays something on my heart, I share it. And there comes another point to this Coffee Time video is I had a lot of things weigh heavy on my sleeve. And, you know, I will put it this way. Y'all, you are my family community. I have made since starting this channel especially over last winter i have made some very very close friends like family and so i can't discard that i had a situation that just it weighed heavy on my heart and i've prayed and prayed over this but you all are a part a big part of my life and some of you are very personally close to my life now and I take this and, and that's another thing about realizing with the Rose Homestead is when you form bonds like this with people and you make a relationship with them honestly to lose your channel where you have been with these folks for so long that's totally, totally devastating. You communicate with them all the time. And so I get it. I have that myself. I have a handful where I could say I have a very good personal relationship with some. And I'm blessed. I'm blessed beyond measure to have that. So, and I'm not afraid. I am a Christian, y'all. And maybe I don't speak scripture on this channel but I will tell you I do love each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart give me one moment and I'll be right back sorry y'all I had to help hubby because at the same time we're also being thank you Lord we're being blessed with fresh honey for our summer stock now it's not a whole lot but we've got some fresh honey from our own hives we lost a major hive and we've learned that sunshine areas are better than shade we're still learning a lot of things on this homestead which is the reason why I share with you if I can make my losses or my devastations on this homestead to improve something for you I'm gonna share that to help you through so you don't have to go through what we did now we lost recently Oh, that one hurt. It was a big hive, lots of honey, but hive beetles took it over and it just turned everything into mush so bad that the honey was just blowing out of the box. All the bees had died. It was just devastating. And so, I mean, 
they need as bad as this heat is they need that sun because high beetles particularly don't like the sun so that one was in a shaded off area and sometimes we experiment now thank god we did not buy those bees they were caught but it was still it was heartbreaking and we go through that this homestead is not a perfect run homestead i go through losses in vegetables and I go through losses in my chickens sometimes my chickens end up with heat stroke this time of year and it breaks my heart it's devastating so I share all of this with you to make it easier for those of you who may be wanting to do this Mediterranean food absolutely now I will tell you one of the reasons I am staying with Mediterranean food is Oh, most a year and a half now I have been maintaining my optimal weight now for me I'm five foot eleven six foot my optimal weight is 175 to 185 and I am just rocking back and forth from 183 to 185 and it's been that way for a year and a half and that is because I'm staying on the Mediterranean diet hang on a minute y'all I apologize for breaking in between you all but we have two frames that's just from one hive and there's plenty more but we're leaving them for the bees now he's going into the second one so this is exciting but anyways um, I just want to take and personally thank each and every one of you I do not want to take any of this for granted you are what helps me you help me on my job I mean if it weren't for you I wouldn't have this so I have to say thank you hold on okay y'all so let's just keep doing this I guess we're just gonna go back and forth at this moment so but it's worth it this is what our lifestyle is it's not just doormat it's busy it's very busy and we get busy doing many things now when we start getting dormant is basically in winter and winter time is when we start slowing down and everything is what we have harvested just like the bees what we harvested through the spring and the summer we start enjoying for the winter so therefore it means that we rest basically now that doesn't mean I'm gonna constantly rest but that means the content changes because I will be doing more cooking because I will be showing you what to do with what we preserved and a lot of it is fresh as well so I do at the Mediterranean as I was speaking um, I'm choosing to stay with Mediterranean it is so much healthier my skin is so much healthier this bread that we make fresh milk I can't change that hold on one moment y'all okay y'all so I'm gonna give you an upfront um, look what it's like to work with this honey that we have plus we're actually catching honeybees and bringing them back home interesting on the homestead but I'm going to show you um, what I'm Hubby's doing. doing here, and, why I'm doing it. and he'll explain why he's doing it. They booked their comb. Okay, y'all, so if you look at this pattern, there was a lot of tunnels. When you're a beekeeper collecting honey, you do not want to see all these tunnels. They were actually building this wrong, so he decided to take this batch. Now, here's the honey that we're going to be straining and this is actually some very beautiful wax so we'll be able to clean this and use it too it won't produce a whole lot of them but if I can do a little bit of scent bead candles this will work great so um, give you an this idea is, of what I'm actually looking for see how they're starting to draw that side out I don't know if you can see that or not that's what I like to see when they start drawing the whole thing out and not put tunnels in it and they were actually popping this out from the frame and that's not let's see like this one here I'll give you an example here's a this is a heavy heavy frame let's see how thick this is and that one's not in the frame actually yeah so this is what we're not looking for they're still learning I'm believing this is a young batch but 
we're taking this and now there is still quite a bit for them to feed on for winter because that's the one thing we do not do we will not take their supply it would be like somebody robbing our pantry and we won't do that to them we leave them enough food for the winter but this one had to and be it's taken. early enough they it ain't gonna really matter right now because it's early enough they can actually build up for the fall harvest yep so and we'd bring out the extruder but that thing is so big just for two frames we're just going to do it i guess the old-fashioned hard way but we're going to do this well that not there you can't do that with okay y'all so i sincerely apologize as you can see back here i had to help process all this honey so and we didn't get a whole lot there was only six pints so we're good uh, like I said we're not looking to actually harvest anyways uh, we probably will have we will see if we have any harvest uh, this fall but technically these bees it's their first year so we're gonna make sure that they have plenty to eat on and the second batch we have didn't even take the top of their home yet so they got a lot more to do We'll see what happens this fall, and if we don't get any honey, then we we know we will come spring, or maybe even summer. So, um, I'm not going to hold you all up too much. I do want to give you a tip. Uh, it's what I didn't mention in the raised beds when it comes to mulching. Now, that's like us. We have free pine needles. Now, I've heard the stories about pine needles are loaded with a lot of acid the thing of it is though it's good for mulch it is free and it actually works for mulch and i will explain to you how that is okay so on a top layer there is not enough acid in those pine needles to release any damage to your soil very little will even reach your soil even down to where the roots are it is not like you are tilling it in like you would hay or straw or anything like that now if you take an awful lot of it in like a compost and blend it in you will definitely turn your soil acidic but just a top layer is not going to do much so if you have an opportunity for free mulch y'all i'm not rich i'm like y'all so i have a neighbor actually i got two neighbors who've got pine trees all over the place and i can get bags and bags of free pine needles when my beds need mulch i technically cannot find straw when i do find straw it's 16 dollars a bale and it might have that um i think it's called glyce glycephate i can't remember how it's pronounced but it's the one chemical that they use in roundup i do not want that in my beds period and i can't be for sure i ask but will they tell the truth i don't know has this straw been sprayed and i definitely won't use hay at all so because i know that's been sprayed so i have free non-sprayed non-chemicals pine needles and i'm going to use it this year to take my beds and insulate them in the summer it's going to help keep my beds moist and in the winter it'll help keep them warm so there is a tip for you if you have a field that's full of pine needles by all means take about an inch no more than two i will say that don't make it super thick you don't need it but one or two inches is good enough and your beds will be absolutely fine yes the pine needles will break into the soil on a top level and by the time it reaches the bottom if even if you turned it it's honestly not going to do much another thing that i am going to do and i probably will do the mixture of both since fall we get a lot of leaves now you could take a lawnmower in a pile of leaves or a weed eater and mulch them up once you mulch this up mix it with those pine needles and you have the ultimate raised bed 
um, covering. Uh, so I'm going to use my leaves along with the needles and I will have mulch. I don't have to worry about any sprayed type mulches. Wood mulch is good, but it's getting very expensive. And if I can get it for free from nature itself, since I do the Garden of Eden, when I put old sticks at the bottom of my beds, it makes sense to use nature in itself to put what I need to in my bed. So leaves and pine needles, that's going to be my mulch, and I will have an abundance of that come fall. I will work with you on this too and show you how I'm going to insulate my beds. In the meantime, we get new green beans coming, y'all. Bush beans. I love fresh beans. I don't, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to can them all. I'm not because I'm only doing what we need. There's no sense trying to keep canned food on my shelf for centuries. I know that oh, after two years we start losing nutrients, vitamins, and even color. There's no sense preserving that far. Um, that's a lot of work wasted. I mean, that's like me making all these videos and then somebody hacked my account, like poor Rose Homestead. So it's worthless. So I just choose to do up to no more than two years and we're good because I grow every year. I don't necessarily need to. And besides, if something ever happened to me, honestly, my family don't do like I do, at least not all of my family. And the other family that is interested in what I do, they're so far away. And so they may come and get my canned goods, but honestly, I don't see them making a trip just for canned goods. So, um, I only do what we need. And that's it, y'all. Uh, we are almost ready to finish up. We are definitely done with corn. I do have six half pint bags in the freezer. I have uh, 36 jars of corn canned. We have um, French cut green beans and cut green beans. Now I probably will can some more French cut because we have a small amount of that. But other than that, we're pretty much set for that. I also have store-bought cans that I bought last year. We're going to go through that too. I'm not going to leave that sit on my shelf. I just, number one, it's aluminum cans and that to me just... I, I got to get rid of them. So that's the first thing on my list that we're going to work on this winter to get rid of before we even touch the jars. So um, I just did that at the spur of the moment. And like many, honestly, I end up going down a rabbit hole of fear of, oh my gosh, we're not going to have this available, that available. And in the end of it, I feel like a butt with an excessive amount of stuff I didn't need. So... You choose to do what you like. I'm going to save my money this year. It's precious, honestly, and it definitely don't grow, grow on trees. So I'm pretty much going to say we're set, and I don't have to spend a lot more money. I'm going to use what we have, and then I'm going to hit this kitchen the Mediterranean way, and I'm going to show you all how to make the most amazing meal ever. I made a salmon salad yesterday that was out of this world using a slab of fresh salmon that I seasoned, baked it for 10 minutes. I had a nice cool summer salad and honestly this was the first time I actually used lettuce as a wrap. It was amazing. It was really, really good. I was full but not over excessively full. I felt good. Um, I slept well. I wasn't weighed down and heavy. And then I served it with the chickpea uh, farinata, which is that chickpea base that I said I could even make a pizza out of. That farinata is amazing. I wished, it's one of those things I wish I'd known then what I know now and how I would have been at this point. But it's never too late to change my life and so I'm still healthy I'm still well maybe not young but I'm young enough so I'm taking care of myself 
I am proud of where I'm at. And I work hard for what we do. And I just, I share it with you because I know somewhere along the line, someone is reaching at the point of where we're at, at our age. We just want to take care of ourselves. We're not old. We just need to take care of ourselves. And I wish I had done it sooner when I was younger. So, but it's okay. And now I know that a lot of you, many of you don't do Mediterranean but I will tell you just so you understand Mediterranean y'all is not a diet it's actually what most homesteaders do is it's fresh living and it's really not that expensive I can go in my garden and come here in the house and create an amazing meal that's so healthy for us and it uses a lot of olive oil so a bottle of olive oil that we use is like, well now it's twelve twenty two a bottle. But it is amazing, it is good, and it is healthy for us. So I try to keep the meals affordable for everybody and yet very, very flavorful. So I hope you look forward to being in the kitchen with me because fall is coming. Though it's hot, I have felt signs that fall is coming and I am so ready for it, y'all. So, Mr. James. So, with that, I am going to go ahead and end this video. Please check out the Rose Homestead. Help her out a little bit, y'all. Build back up. That is a devastating moment. And also, from here on, my promise is I am going to hold off on all of the sponsor deals, collaboration deals. And I mean, they're good sometimes be very very careful some of you who are on my channel are very new as well you are just now being monetized and you will have these offers come to you just like me I am going to put this warning out to you be careful be very careful some of these are not legitimate they will take everything your entire lifestyle and that's what this is it is a job it is a lifestyle. It is a lot of hard work to become a creator for somebody with a snap of your finger. Take it all away from you. That's devastating. My heart goes out to you. So Rose Homestead, if you are seeing this channel, bless you, sweetheart. And I pray that God blesses you over and abundantly more than what you've had in the beginning. If I can help, this is how I'm going to help. So check her out y'all in the meantime much love if you like our videos please it is important to hit the like button leave a comment it keeps us in the algorithm of things it lets YouTube know that we're interesting enough to keep on here because it's a hard it's a hard deal to try to keep up so let's grow bigger y'all love you and until next time we're gonna start being in that kitchen so much love from Parton's Heritage Homestead.